Welcome to this chapter of Adobe Photoshop 2023 Classroom in a Book. This is chapter five on quick fixes. Today we're going to look at some of the most basic things that every photographer should know how to do in Photoshop. That will save you tons of time, let you enjoy your photography, get back to your craft, and quit sitting in front of the computer too long. So to save you hours of your life, please watch this short video. Don't forget to hit subscribe and hit like to see more videos just like this. So to get started, we'll go ahead and open up this first image here of a red eye piece. I'm going to go ahead and open up this file. Now, red eye is the problem of having blood actually showing through the light flash hitting the eyes. It lights up the eyes and the blood vessels and bounces that blood back through the iris. Uh, and so what can happen to remove red eye in the actual shooting process, I recommend as a photographer, is to make sure you're, you're actually having your flash a distance from the camera. So when the, the flash and the camera are too close to the same angle, that's how you get red eye which does happen with cell phones uh, and even some of the uh, nicer cameras if you have a pop-up flash. We'll go ahead and zoom in, make this piece a little bit larger. I can go ahead and zoom by clicking the zoom tool and zooming in a bit, clicking and dragging. It allows me to zoom in and to see it in or out. I'm going to go ahead and zoom and see the eyes nice and close. But before I do that, we should go ahead and make sure the book has you go ahead and save it as. We'll go ahead and use it as a save as red eye working file make it as a psd photoshop file and hit save the red eye option is not that difficult you'll find that tool inside the different healing brushes the automatic tool the red eye sample tool now you might have to adjust your settings a little bit depending on what your settings are in your camera you probably have different options i want to adjust the pupil size to 23 the darken amount to 62 and all i do is go ahead and click in the pupil and click and click and with a matter of literally two clicks You've fixed the problem of the red eye. Now, the pupil still looks kind of funny, but we've at least removed the ugly red glare out of the eyes. Now, not every image will be that quick and easy to repair. Sometimes you have to click and drag around the red eye, but Photoshop has done a pretty good job of making those adjustments. So if we go ahead and zoom out and see this piece, we'll go ahead and brighten the image. It's a little bit dark because it's a simple snapshot image to show you a bad image of how we need to improve that in Photoshop. Now, there are a couple different adjustments I can do here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go to my adjustment levels and go to levels and curves and brightness contrast. I'm going to go ahead and choose for this example curves. And there's an automatic tool to all of them. I hit the auto tool and that will make an adjustment to here add the midtones a little bit brighter. But it's not affecting the highlights and it's not affecting the shadow portion of my piece. And that's a good thing. Uh, but it's maybe not a perfect job. I'm going to move into my presets and go from my custom settings down to my lighter RGB. There's many different options and presets, and I would adjust. It's not as drastic as the auto feature did here, but it does make some adjustments to the levels and to make it a little bit uh, brighter in the curving pattern here. Or if I want to go ahead and click and drag, and I can make those adjustments by just clicking and dragging to my own touch. Now, another interesting feature here that Photoshop allows is the clicking and dragging to modify the curve. So I click this icon right here. And I go ahead and click somewhere on the image. I'm going to go ahead and click on her forehead. I can move the mouse up or the move the mouse down. It will make those adjustments to my curves. I can make some adjustments and that looks pretty good as it's done some auto adjustments. You can always come in here and adjust the lines on your own to manually make those adjustments. Now you don't want a flat line. Just like in a hospital, you don't want a flat line. That's a bad idea. We definitely don't want to do that in Photoshop. With a flat line, things look nasty. The colors look very flat and the tones look very artificially gross. Uh, we don't want to do that. So we don't want to make sure we're not flatlining with our adjustments, but we can just make some adjustments to the brightness and darkness and that's making some pretty good changes now we we'll go ahead and hit save Control s or command s on a mac and we can move on to the next layer i can go ahead and flatten these options i'm going to flatten so now i have one layer to work on the different effects liquify tool one of my favorite options in photoshop and uh, you can do all kinds of things to creating some interesting cartoony characters look like you're drawn at a theme park i do some fun stuff with it but really what it does Nowadays, in the last few versions, it's gotten really good at some of its artificial intelligence. I'm going to go to Liquify under the Filter tool. It will pop up its own menu. You'll lose some of the toolbar. You'll lose some of the different settings of the layers. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this layer here. Make it nice and big. And now I can see some of these different tools. But at this point, I'm not going to use some of the more automatic uh, or more manual tools here. I'm going to go ahead and just use some adjustments to my face and eye setting. Now you might see it open up something like this. We're going to work with the eyes and the mouth tool. And now there's some different settings we can go ahead and work with. I can choose the eyes to make one eye bigger or smaller. Now it's doing some automatic generation. It's knowing 
by artificial intelligence, what is the eye and the nose and the mouth and the chin? It does a lot of these things. So you don't have to do a lot of fancy adjustments like you used to not too many years ago. So I'm going to go into my eye size. And the book has to change first before doing anything, lock the different settings. So each one, as I adjust one, adjust the other eye appropriately. So if you don't have them locked, you can make one eye much larger than the other one, uh, which might be great for caricature, but probably not good for a flattering portrait. So as you adjust the height size to 32 and adjust the eye height to 10. Now you can use the bars to try it in differences and see what you would think as you manually adjust them. Now as I go to the preview option here at the bottom, I can see it made a pretty big difference on the eye's size. And I go ahead and want to adjust the mouth a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and according to the book, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the mouth for a smile to 5 and the mouth height to 9. Turn the preview on and off. And that's making some difference to her mouth. More subtle. I'm going to go ahead and change also the face shape section. Open up the face shape, shape area. I'm going to go ahead and go to the jawline and go down to up to 40 on the jawline and the face width to 50. That's changing definitely some of the features of her face, actually giving her some plastic surgery in Photoshop. Now to accept these changes, I need to either hit OK or I have to hit Cancel to get back to the rest of Photoshop, what I was in originally. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. That will bring my change. And now it's made this adjustment right to my file. So I go ahead and save this file, and I can close it on to the next portion of the video. So for the next video, we're going to go ahead and look at the egret file. I'm going to go ahead and find the JPEG file here, and I'm going to go ahead and open up as a smart object. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to do it Open in a Camera Raw. So I'm going to go ahead and Photoshop, not in Bridge, and go to File, Open as Smart Object. I'm go ahead and find that uh, egret file, open up that picture. And now it opens it up as a smart object. I can tell that because I have this special little signal here, this logo on the file, which means it's a smart object. And I'm going to go ahead and add some of these special filters. The blur gallery gives you lots of different options to make and adjust as a smart object. So go to filter, blur gallery, and I'm going to do an iris blur, like the iris of your eye, or iris of a camera. That opens up my menu settings here. I can also edit all the different settings here. I have the field blur, iris blur, tilt shift, path blur, spin blur, all aspects in here. And I go ahead and change this by adjusting the different oval settings to make it more or less oval or more circular and adjust those different settings in a couple different ways to change that. And also click here to change the feathering of the piece. If I hold Alt, I can choose one side to be a little more feathered. Or if I let him go of Alt, I can choose all of them to get more or less feathered. I can also go ahead and click in here to make it more or less blur amount. But the idea the book talks about is making this fit the idea, the size of the bird, rotating it to fit the position of the bird. Something like that. Changing the filter a little bit more, a little bit less, about there. Now they're not all going to be exactly the same because there's just kind of eyeballing the idea, but to select on that filter, I'm going to go ahead and change the radial down to 5, about like that. You can also change it here by typing in 5 of the pixel, and that looks pretty good. You need to go ahead and hit OK to make that acceptance, or I could cancel to start over. But right now we do see I have a smart filter. As I turn that smart filter layer on and off, I can see the change is blurring a little bit of the size of the picture. Now if I want to make this adjustment tomorrow, next year, next millennium, I go ahead and double click the blur gallery. And I can then open up the file and change the settings after the fact. Go to something more drastic, maybe I only want to do six, seven pixels, make an adjustment, hit OK, and I can make all these adjustments afterwards. Go ahead and save the file, close it. For the third and final portion of this video, we'll go ahead and look at panoramics. So for panoramic, we're going to go ahead and make something look like this, where we have many different pictures captured at different angles to get a panoramic feel. Now in the file for panoramic, I have four different shots here between skyline one, two, three, and four. And they're about 30% overlapped, but this is the file sequence. It's important to shoot from left to right or right to left. I will also say in the process of shooting, make sure you're overlapping about 30%. Book says 15 to 40, I recommend at least about a quarter. I use consistent focal length so you're not zooming in or zooming out by mistake. You want to keep it the same length. 
uh, make sure it's level as best as possible. Using a tripod can help to make sure it's level. That's important. Uh, and taking the photos from the same position. You're not taking several steps and moving around while you're taking the pictures. Uh, and avoid lenses that create distortion. Wider angle lenses, 12, 15, 20 millimeter, 24 millimeter, can create some distortion, which makes it look very odd uh, and warped already. I recommend 50 millimeter lens, maybe even an 85 millimeter lens. I've shot some of my panoramics in. And make sure you're not changing the exposure. So if you're brighter or darker, especially the apertures, that will change the, what's in focus or out of focus between pictures. And that makes the stitching not look natural because things are in and out of focus as you piece this together. So let's go ahead and go into Photoshop. We can go up to File. We can go to Automate. And we can go into Photo Merge. We'll go ahead and find our files where you ever happen to have them. Skyline 1 through 4. I'm going to go ahead and open these up by hitting OK. It's got all of them added in. Auto will do a pretty good job. You could try some of these different settings. Uh, if you're not ever really sure which one to choose, I would definitely recommend Auto. But we're going to use Perspective Tool. I'm going to also go ahead and make sure they're blended image together. Vignette Removal, Geometric Distortion Correction. And I'm going to do a Content Aware Fill Transparent option. All four layers are in there. Perspective, all my checkboxes are selected. I hit OK. It will automate for a while. And while it's doing that, you know, step away, get a uh, bite to eat or go get a drink or take the dog out or whatever you need to do. Once it, pieces them, once it pieces them together, we'll be in good shape. So it's done the automatic stitching and actually did a really good job. It shows you some of the selection area, what has been added, the content aware area that was artificially generated for the piece. It's not perfect. You see some of the whale isn't quite right on the bottom, but it did a pretty good job of adding to the sky. The thing I like about the tool is it actually lets you see all of them layered together, but it'll also show me each piece. If I turn off the top layer, I can see each piece that's been stitched together, which is really great. So it gives me controls. If I'm really a control freak to adjust each setting along the way, which is an excellent feature. But for now, this looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and select all the layers and go ahead and flatten the layers. I can go ahead and hit save. And now we're going to do some basic crop. So now I'm going to go ahead and deselect. I'm going to go up to select, deselect or control D for my shortcut. And I'm going to go ahead and find the crop tool. The crop tool is the fifth setting on the toolboard panel. And I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments here. But first we notice that the horizon is a little bit crooked. So I need to go ahead and straighten. I'm going to straighten. And it's just like using a level if you're in construction business and you want to select and make sure that is level. I click and drag on one portion of the horizon. Down, follow the horizon where it's also here. And I'm at a point, negative point 0.1, well, negative 1.2. So it's slightly off. I'm going to go ahead and then adjust my crop tool to make it bigger where there's be an open area where there's no uh, sky here, but I can do a content aware to bring that back. Brighten my, increase my crop size about here. Enlarge the bottom just a little bit. So it's just before the ugly uh, bar that is not content, of the, well, uh, content aware filled already. About there. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I have the content aware fill box also on in my options panel. Once I've got that, I hit okay. It will process for a while. And it does a pretty good job of making those changes. It's straighter, and I would say it's maybe a little bit dark as well. To make those adjustments to the brightness, we can go ahead and open the Levels tool. Go ahead, go to the Adjustment level, go to the Levels tool. And I'm going to use the White Dropper tool. So I use the White Dropper tool. Not the dark, but the white. And what I click, it's going to try to make that area become white. So as I click the bright portion of the cloud, I want to make that adjustment just a little bit more brighter on the cloud section. I click the cloud, and it will make some adjustments based on where I'm clicking. If I accidentally click somewhere like the blue, now the blue sky is now white. That's not exactly what I'm looking for, but I want to click the brighter portion of the sky just to brighten that up a little bit. So make a subtle adjustment to my tones. Now it's an adjustment layer, so I can adjust these later. Come back and do it another day if I want it as well. But this just gives you a good gauge of helping to control any type of color balance that might be in the shot. If it's a little bit red or yellow or blue casted to remove some of that because this is saying this cloud is white, adjust everything appropriately to that portion. And I can go ahead and accept those changes. So now that I've adjusted my piece, after stitching all together, I've cropped the piece. I'm going to go ahead and save my file. So this concludes the, this portion of Chapter 5 in Quick Fixes. Uh, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to see more options. I'm going to go ahead and put the last part of the chapter, because it's large, onto a second video. Look for that soon. And as always, thanks for watching Better Picks in just a few clicks.